let's talk about this too. This is really depressing, but also very um, affirming to me because it basically confirms everything that I've been seeing when I've been going outside. And this is news courtesy of The Guardian. And it says it's titled, One in five nightclubs in Great Britain closed during COVID pandemic. Data shows only 1,130 nightclubs remain in England, Wales and Scotland. A 20% drop on March 2020. 20% drop. Absolutely incredible, man. Absolutely incredible. I've always said from the beginning that I think pandemics effectively killed clubs. But then I feel like the, the lockdown essentially killed people's desire to go clubbing that's a different yeah so pandemic closed lockdown uh close um the, the pandemic cl um closed the clubs and then the lockdown closed people's desires because i feel like or got rid of the desire to go to the club because i feel like especially got rid of your desire you end up to be, you end up figuring out ways to be more resourceful you ended up ways to have more fun doing the things doing newer things than your usual going to a nightclub and in general you grew up a lot during that time too so maybe you just got out of it but for a business most nightclubs were the first places to close and the last to reopen for natural reasons and for reasons that made sense at the time because of how the virus spread and it being respiratory and the fact that it was there was loads of aircon everywhere, blah, 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 loads of kisses. It could be that it's another bout of COVID, right? Coming through again. That's basically caused most of these clubs to close. But I think in general as a business, it's just impossible, impossible. I think most clubs have showed it to run a business in any kind of, lockdown pandemic it's just impossible because effectively the whole point of a nightclub is to get many people as you can into one space before it's too full and then after that let people run let people run the whole night let people do their thing get sweaty you know what i mean that's basically what you should be doing in nightclubs going forward but anyway let's do the article it says one in five nightclubs in Great Britain have closed over the past three years after the sector was badly hit during COVID-19 pandemic and other economic pressures. Figures shared by the Nighttime Industries Association, the NTIA and trade body representing businesses in nighttime economy revealed that there are only 1,130 nightclubs left in England, Wales and Scotland. There are a 20% drop since the first lockdown of March 2020, which is absolutely depressing. Let me see how many nightclubs exist in flipping... Um, how many nightclubs in, let's say, Berlin? Don't piss me off. There's 4,500 bars and clubs in Berlin. Again, they're not club, nightclub, nightclubs, because it's hard to dif differentiate between them. I'm not sure what constitutes a bar and a nightclub. If you have a dance floor, does that mean that you're essentially a nightclub? Or do you have to, or can bars have night or dance floors too? I'm not too sure, but regardless... There are 4,500 clubs and bars in Berlin alone. And we have only 1,130 nightclubs in the whole of England, the whole of, sorry, the whole of the United Kingdom. Absolutely incredible. And that basically proves everything that's wrong with the situation we're in at the moment. And they can't sit here and blame the pandemic and lockdown only. Because this is a problem that's been happening from day dot. It's not only pandemic and um, lockdown specific. I think this has to do a lot with the government. This has to do a lot of people's attitudes here in the UK. We're very anti-fun. There's a lot of rules and regulations behind everything that we do. In terms of setting up boxing matches. In terms of setting up YouTube events. In terms of getting permission to film videos in certain places. Um, you know, in terms of riding an electric scooter on the street. There's so many rules and, and stipulations that exist when it concerns... Um, when it concerns everything to do with flipping nightlife and parties and fun stuff, that it does really get it does really get a little bit demoralizing to try and organize those things because you're not too sure if it's going to be successful. Mostly, well, you have some reasons that are based outside of your control. Not most, but some of them are based outside of your control, which can be really frustrating. But it continues. It says there were one thousand four hundred and forty six nightclubs in Britain in December two thousand nineteen, one thousand nine hundred and twenty four. In December 2014, according to Europe, affected by the data and record accusation confirmation firm. The combination of pandemic debt and growing bill costs and workfare challenges, supply chains um, are contributed, so have, have contributed to the slow ticket sales and the frequent frequency of these venues. And I've noticed it myself, I've said many a times here on this podcast and to friends. I've been to the Bergheim many times, right? I've been to Bergheim Panorama Bar many, many times in Berlin, the premier sort of nightclub within the dance music space. And I've been there pre-2019, and I went there again, you know, 
in post-pandemic world for the Club Sylvester thing that they do, right? Which is essentially their way of celebrating New Year's Eve, um, you know, making up for the last one that they kind of missed last minute because of the lockdown or whatnot in Germany. But even I have noticed a stark difference in the terms in terms of the amount of people in that nightclub. Don't get me wrong, the queues can still be a little bit hectic if they decide they want to let you queue or maybe if it's quote-unquote too full for the night. But for the most part... Um, Berlin and you know but for the most part the Berghain isn't as full as it once was and I've noticed in my own eyes it isn't as once full as it once was at all zero it's not even close to being as full as it once was um and it's sad to see to be completely honest because if the Berghain is struggling to get people in there and they're you know cranking out the events and trying to get back to normal as soon as possible you can just imagine what it's like for like a far out the place basement bar somewhere that was doing fairly well before the lockdown was looking to expand and do different things and then suddenly gets hit with that it's absolutely gruesome it really really is gruesome and then on top of that add to that all the um, reports that I kind of read on another podcast concerning Gen Z and millennials and why they have the changing attitudes to do going out and then on top of that look at the economy in general with inflation you know, the rising price of oil and everything else being affected, affected, effectively affecting everything else out there in society. I even saw the other day that cheeseburgers and McDonald's have gone up in price because of what's been going on in the economy. So all these things have definitely played a part in people's decision making about going out clubbing. Because if you don't have that many, if you don't have a lot of money, doing those kind of things in general is just a bit nuts. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just a bit nuts, like going clubbing and stuff, especially in the post-pandemic world where you're not really forced to go anywhere because a lot of people are essentially still a bit shy or have some sort of lingering covid ps ptsd in terms of meeting people and going around people and stuff so people kind of avoid it or they go to outdoor spaces so those things are still available right and people are doing them on mass but clubs have not really returned back to normal they really haven't and i doubt they will to be honest i really doubt they will especially when you've got people like amy La amy fucking lammy in charge of the nighttime economy not doing absolutely nothing hasn't been seen in person in yonks that disgrace to be honest continues anyway it says um, the combination of the it says yeah the venue trade the the trade body sorry um, also warned that the unique the true impact sorry of the cost of inflation of businesses has yet to be seen with more than fifty three point eight percent of respondents still new, re, still to renew their energy contracts some parts of Britain they said here were worse hit than others such as the Midlands where nearly thirty percent of nightclubs have closed since March twenty and you can only imagine that would be the case because of their smaller towns, they have less of a catchment area, or maybe they were relying a lot on university students to fill up their space, and now they've left, or now they're working from home, sorry. It's absolutely crazy how it's impacted everybody going forward. And then, of course, you've got the added inclusion of a lot of foreigners not being able to go to these nightclubs because of the change, you know, in the law, especially with Brexit, or a lot of them decided to go back home during the pandemic because they want to go and look after family members, because, if anything, the pandemic also highlighted and proved to us just how family orientated a lot of those people are from other communities they do like to go back home a lot and visit their family they do have a lot of family that live in you know one household com com you know accommodation and shit so they want to go and look after them that way a lot of them maybe don't earn that much money so instead of working here and busting their ass they'd rather go back home and kind of do that and a lot of people that i've basically seen who basically did a lot of that seasonal kind of work working in bars and clubs in europe and stuff or in london and then going back and taking the money a lot of people haven't come back to their jobs i know a lot of nightclub owners and um and people and stuff were basically complaining when the lockdown did end i think the first couple of times that effectively the lockdown killed their business because it effectively got rid of or allowed them to lose a lot of their key employees that are basically holding everything down in their business and i guess in bar work or in every world i guess in every avenue of life when you find really good people, you don't let them go. It doesn't matter if they are dustbin men, doesn't matter if they flip burgers, if they serve your drinks or they work in a big glitzy corporation. If you've got good people, you don't let them go. And I guess the pandemic forced people to let them go. And then essentially they've never been able to recover off the back of that, which has been quite sad, I think, for everybody associated with those kind of things, I think, going forward. But hey ho, I guess. What can we do? What can we do? Um but yeah, um I'm gonna pause the podcast for now what can we do what can we do and it continues anyway it says as follows it says as follows here um the trade body also warned da, 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 sorry, sorry. it continues here it said da, da, da. when broken down the region that experienced the biggest percentage drop 28 percent nightclubs in december was central england and central wales 
um, followed by the southeast of out of outside London 27 and the southwest 27. And there's a 25% drop in nightclubs in Yorkshire and a 24% fall in the northwest, while Scotland had a 21% drop. And again, these places can't survive 21% drops. The scenes, you know what I mean, like 21% drop effectively means you might have to change career. Do you know what I mean? Because some of the bigger clubs that are basically holding you down with residencies and stuff or allowing you to put on consecutive nights, you know, month on month, those places go and then suddenly you can't put on those parties anymore. Suddenly the people that you are promoting to aren't there anymore. It does really create a vacuum and essentially you have to go and seek other means of employment or other means of generating income. It's absolutely brutal, man, what this has effectively done to people. It continues. The NTI chief executive, Michael Kiel, said late night economy businesses were one of the quickest sectors to rebound during the financial crisis many years ago harboring um an abundance of, rela- of resilience and entrepreneurial spirit it without a doubt that these businesses particularly nightclubs have had a huge part to play in the return in the regeneration of the high street in towns and cities across the uk beyond the generation of the foot flow through the trade domestic and international visitors to clubs support the local economy in secondary and tertiary um, per- um, purchases through accommodation travel and retail this something that's always been annoying to me when it comes to gentrification because effectively i feel like gentrification kills the ability for local communities or local areas to basically have all that extra money coming off the back of nightclubs because when night when nightlife is booming in your area you look at places like hackney wick you look at places like manor house you look at places like tottenham places like peckham brixton when clubs start to spring up out of the blue out of those kind of areas right they essentially draw people in and then people start you know setting up nightclubs there setting up sorry um uh, club nights there setting up their own events or just basically being there often it might make them want to then go and rent an apartment or buy a house there which then might make them more likely than not go and invest in the local economy by going through their weekly shop or going to local businesses like hairdressers and shit to go and get their hair done like all those things get happen a lot due to people moving there for nightclubs and nightlife type of stuff but i have real doubts about whether or not that kind of chain of um, investing back in the economy continues when you then go and set up these big glitzy shiny glass and metal uh, buildings in these local areas and they basically gentrify them i don't think that actually happens when you gentrify places i feel like gentrification effectively kills it because those accommodation units or those apartments they don't really they price certain people out. So the people that are basically making those places hot, the hipsters and the creative people, they can't afford two, three, four, five grand a month. So they're not going to be able to be in those kind of spaces. So you're effectively going to um, rent those places out to foreign investors or people with a lot of money who effectively don't really give a shit about the local economy because they basically just go there to rest their head and whatnot. It's pretty diabolical. And I think that's a real crying shame going forward. It really, really is. It continues here. It says, Kiel said that businesses played a key part in people's decision-making process from choosing university or colleges and influencing investment choices for businesses relocating or expanding to the accommodate um, for a young workforce. Not forgetting the important part they play in people's physical, mental and social well-being, the government needs to recognise the economic, cultural and community value of clubs and the wider nighttime economy, which is never going to happen. Either if it's through a Labour government or for a Tory government, this country for some reason at its core has a real issue when it comes to nightlife and clubs let alone outdoor festivals and whatever it may be there's a real problem with people gathering if it ha- if it doesn't have to do with people gathering in restaurants or inside of theaters and stuff that's okay you can open as many theaters and restaurants as you want restaurants don't stop opening up right they keep springing up all over the place but when it comes to nightclubs it's really hard to open a nightclub and be successful for a long period of time and it's also very very difficult to set up open air festivals in london that sound good that produce to a high level that accommodate a lot of people without people throwing their toys out of the prime look what they're doing with notting hill carnival every year notting hill carnival is at fucking risk and that is a that is a British institution and they don't want to let that and they kind of want to kind of let that one go, sweep it under the rug, despite what economic help it might bring to that local community as well when it's on every single year. They don't want to do that going forward. So it's an absolute travesty. And I don't know why it is. If someone else knows about it and can kind of clue me in, please do provide some context in the comments because I'm really confused why this country seems to hate fun. And it continues here. It says Lisa Landy, um, Lisa Nandy, sorry, Labour's shadow um, levelling up secretary 
said that reopening once loved nightclubs in the struggling towns and city centers could help to revive high street yeah okay every single town um has lost a nightclub they feel very strongly about that was part of our history and our heritage says labor you know which they want to try and get back involved in but and i don't know if it's going to be really applicable i don't think i think all these flipping government all these government officials all these parties basically hate fun but if they don't if they don't hate fun i'd like to be proven wrong i would like to be proven wrong